Hello class, this is uh, another part of our chapter 3 video review and we're going to discuss mass spring systems with an external force and this is going to look pretty similar to the mass spring system that we had in the previous video except that now we have this F0 cosine omega t term and this represents an outside force acting on your mass spring system it can be wind, it can be a magnetism, it can be a, it can be a magnet or something and typically in these problems, we, we have the external force be a periodic force, so there's a cosine omega t term, so the, the outside force is also oscillating. The main thing to worry about in this class of problems are the ideas of uh, resonance and practical resonance. So resonance is the case when we have no friction, so true resonance is only possible in an environment where there is no friction. And to do this, we have to solve for the unforced equation. And remember that C is zero, so there's no middle term. So it's just mx double prime t plus kxt equals to zero. Solving the unforced equation will tell you the natural frequency of your mass spring system. So this is the frequency that your spring wants to move in, ignoring the external force. And solving this differential equation, we find that your general solution is going to be C1 cosine of root k over mt plus C2 sine root k of mt. And the natural angular frequency that your spring system wants to move in is just that k over m term. So resonance happens when your outside force omega is equal to this natural frequency. So when your external force is, is acting on the spring in the same frequency that the spring naturally wants to act in, it will cause the system to behave in bad and unpredictable ways. For the case where there is friction, we cannot have true resonance, so we never have the the, function, the, the system completely collapse. But we do have this idea that the external force's frequency can affect the amplitude of the solution. And you have this amplitude formula. So whenever your external force is F0 cosine omega t, the amplitude of your resulting solution will be F0 k minus m omega squared squared plus c omega squared. And the key to find a practical resonance is to find the frequency omega that maximizes c. So you can do this by regular calculus methods, set the derivative of c to be equal to zero and find the appropriate omega. That's the way the book does it. The way that I do it is to just, instead of maximizing c, minimize the polynomial in the denominator of c. And that's pretty easy to do. But in any case, um, yeah, this is just very, very basic calculus, and uh, I don't think it's too difficult. You will not need to memorize the formula for amplitude. If you need it, it will be given to you. Finally, the last topic we will talk about are the transient and steady periodic solutions. And this is, in actuality, pretty easy. So let's say once you've uh, solved for the solution, for the movement of the spring, of a mass spring system that's forced, it typically looks like this. You have um, all these trig functions, and some of them have exponentials and some don't. Notice that for the ones with exponentials, if t becomes large, they disappear. So that's why we call these the transient solution. It's transient because it doesn't last very long. As t becomes large, it just goes away. We also consider this last part, the part without an exponential, the steady periodic solution. And again, it's pretty straightforward to, to figure out why it's called that way, because this is periodic and it will always be periodic. As time goes on, you still have this periodic solution and it, it will never go away.